Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to a brand new video on the channel and in today's video I will show you the best settings to completely optimize Streamlabs OBS. Before we get right into the video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe and follow my Instagram, ilocusyt. Without any further ado, the first thing you guys are going to want to do is open Streamlabs and go to settings. If you don't already have Streamlabs downloaded, Streamlabs OBS downloaded, I left a link in the description where you can download it right now. Starting off with the first category, general, this is really all personal preference. I never actually edited any of this, so we can just move on to stream. This is where you actually put your streaming key, so Streamlabs OBS can connect directly to YouTube to send, send your live feed. If you use Twitch or Mixer, this is also where you can put your streaming key. On to the next category, output. We're going to be spending a lot of time in this category because we have to go over all of streaming and all of recording. I won't actually be able to change my options <clears throat> because I'm using Streamlabs OBS to record, but let's get right into it. So the first thing we're going to have to change is encoder. On your screen, you're going to see two main options, NVENC and X264. If you see an advanced option of NVENC, just ignore that because I never really found the main option, uh, the main reason for that. It's not too different from N the regular NVENC, ENC, and I found that it just causes more problems than help. So, NVENC is better at handling rapid changes in your stream, such as a quick turn in a video game, while X264 makes your gameplay blocky, blocky when rapid changes are made. X264 is best for a PC with a weak GPU and CPU. So if your computer isn't that strong, you're going to want to choose X264. But for now, since my PC is actually pretty good, I'm going to use NVENC. When it comes to rate control, you're going to want to choose CBR, constant bitrate. In my opinion, it's just a really, it's really the best option for all PCs. When it comes to bitrate, it's going to give you 5,000, but I will downscale it down to like 3,500 or 3,000 if you don't really have good internet. My internet is pretty good, but I have a lot of people in my family that are always using the internet, so I have to downscale it down to 3,500. Onto keyframe interval, you're going to want to choose two. Onto preset quality, onto preset, you're going to want to choose quality. Unless you have like a really good PC, you can choose max quality. You're going to want to change profile to high, GPU to zero, unless you're using more than one GPU, and max B frames to two. When you're done changing the settings for all of streaming, you're going to want to go to recording. Now, a lot of the settings are the same as streaming but there still are some things that we have to change up here. When it comes to recording format, you're gonna to wanna to change it to MP4 because that's the most compatible format with basically every website and software. When it comes to audio tracks, we will be going into that uh, once we get to audio, so just hold off on that. When it comes to recording, we already talked about the benefits of NVENC and X264, so you could just choose with that, whichever you chose for streaming. When it comes to rate control, we already talked about CBR, constant bitrate, and bitrate for uh, recording. You can actually go like 500 or 250 more than you did for streaming because streaming requires more power than recording. Uh, keyframe intervals, zero. Preset quality, profile high, GPU zero, max B frames, two. Basically all the same as streaming. When it comes to audio and replay buffer, I never actually changed anything here. None of this will actually like improve the quality of your streaming or recording when it comes to audio this is where you can change your different devices i just keep it at default because i do have another desktop but i don't really use it for audio and then this is where you can put in your different microphones i only have one microphone that i plug in my headset so let's move right on to video video is where you can optimize your resolution to best fit your pc 1080 works for me because my PC is pretty good, but you can always downscale it to 720 to put less stress on your PC. Now, if you do have a decent PC, you're going to want to use Linksos Sharpening Scale 32 samples, but if you don't, you're going to want to use Bicubic 16 samples. When it comes to these two options, for FPS type, choose common FPS values, and then for that, I choose 60 FPS. You can go lower than that, but it does, and it does put less stress on your PC, but it doesn't look that good in your stream. When it comes to hotkeys, this is where you can put hotkeys to start or stop your streaming or recording, etc. Yeah, it doesn't really change any of your quality in your stream, so you can just ignore that if you're not interested. When it comes to advanced, there's not a lot we are going to want to change here, but the first thing we are going to want to change is process priority. You're going to want to put that from normal to above normal. What that does is it actually gives Streamlabs OBS more CPU power. And then when it comes to video, I just keep it at 601 full. When you change it to partial or when you change it to anything when you change it to anything else except 
601. I've heard that you can actually get a red tint on your stream or when you're recording. So just keep it at 601 and full. And then everything else is really just personal preference. So yeah, that basically concludes it for the best settings for Streamlabs OBS. I almost forgot to tell you guys to press done when you're done with all the settings. So once you're done with that, make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you have not already or if you did enjoy the video. And thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one.